Good day ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Bow News Network. Uh, we're actually doing a special update today on April 30th. Uh, going in, we're going into the month of May and the last seven days have just been offering a lot of very, very turbulent uh, weather in the region of the Southeast United States, um, also the Ar um, Arklatex uh, border, uh, Arkansas, Louisiana, Texas border and we pretty much see a lot of the same. Um, primarily, we are working with a low, um, uh, a minor low pressure system that's actually just anchored a little bit off of Corpus Christi, Texas. And we've been watching this system as producing, helping to influence quite a bit of thunderstorm activity, um, some hail activity, as you can see from the radar. Um, actually, before we get into this, uh, do ask that you simply just like smash that like button and go ahead and subscribe so that you can be in line to actually get future weather updates especially if, if you appreciate good weather content we try to bring uh, daily updates uh, for the weather for the continental United States okay so um, we're actually taking a closer look at what's actually happening along the Texas Louisiana border uh, we anticipate going into the weekend that there's going to be significant thunderstorm activity uh, we're actually seeing different cells that are actually popping up on the radar also and you can actually see that there's another system that's actually off the coast of Montana um, it's actually anchored um, and influencing the weather in the Montana region we're primarily focusing on this region simply because um, of the flash flush flash flooding threat that may uh, may be uh, may arise for quite a few of the states especially the states of arkansas and louisiana and mississippi um, also texas because for the last few days the last seven days or so there have been just a sim significant amount of precipitation in this zone and of course we're working with very very warm sea surface temperatures in the low 70s right now and we are already pretty much in the month of may and of course you know what June um, has in store for us which is um, you know we start thinking about uh, the hurricane season and right now it seems pretty significant that um, the storm prediction center has actually upped their anticipated uh, forecast for hurricanes for 2021 um, and it's actually they've upped their average um, as far as using a different time period considering the intense activity that we've had um, in the last 10 years so uh, you know there's definitely there's definitely increased activity in the tropics there's definitely more um, higher intensity of the systems but um, based on this forecast that we're working on right now um, we're actually just primarily looking at this um, uh, this uh, minor low that's uh, anchored south of Texas and as the system actually move, makes its way across there's going to be uh, we anticipate some, uh, heavy rain for um, for the states of Texas Louisiana we anticipate additional precipitation going into next week for um, the Tennessee Valley Ohio Valley also uh, lower Mississippi Valley um, all residents in that region should anticipate additional um, heavy rainfall possibly flat fl uh, flash flooding um, threats going into um, the early part of next week but if we actually take a closer look at the um, at the at the radar um, precipitation model we can actually see that um, there's quite a bit of thunderstorm activity um, actually in the area of between basically between the area of Corpus Christi and Houston and we anticipate that um, there's going to be quite a bit of uh, saturated um, heavy heavy um, precipitation in that region um, for this weather forecast let's go ahead and load our cuboid and we're actually working with a cuboid that of course started with our GOES 16 satellite imagery um, also is going to be working with their, this precipitation model that we're looking at now it's also going to be taking a look at the Cape profile values which has to do with the convective um, convective available potential energy for producing the storms and also there's a missing link in why we're not going to be too focused on 
the intensity um, ele being elevated to possibly tornado threats at this junction simply because of one element and we will discuss that in this forecast. We'll also look at bulk sharing at a higher latitude of about 18,000 feet, 500 millibars and we're also going to take a look at the lapse rates. So as we take a closer look at this we can actually see that there's quite a bit of um, quite a bit of storm activity actually occurring right at the Gulf and of course we have that warm affection, that warm um, um, warm energy that's being pulled in by this low and it's actually pulling more and more moisture into the region of Texas and Louisiana which is actually helping to influence quite a bit of these storms. Uh, if we take a closer look at also uh, the Cape values, Cape values of course has to do with the uh, basically the convective uh, energy that's available for storms to intensify and to grow and as we take a closer look we see quite a bit of um, uh, modules along the coast of Texas uh, pretty high Cape values but of course for us to really see super severe weather there has to be a lot of different subtle elements that have to align to help increase the storm relative vorticity which will increase the likelihood of possible tornadoes but we do see cape which is one element that we look at in the forecast center as far as um, being influencing uh, the region as far as intensity of storms we anticipate heavy rainfall we anticipate very very severe thunderstorm activity with lightning and hail with damaging winds but at this particular time uh, we don't anticipate um, severe tornado touchdowns as it was a few days ago, uh, not with that type of intensity, but it remains to be seen um, depending on other elements in, in the picture. Um, also, if we take a closer look at our, our bulk sharing, we actually took a little snapshot of um, uh, the wind shear at 500 millibars, which is about um, we like to say it's about halfway up into the atmosphere and we are seeing some pretty heavy gusting winds coming out of the uh, southwest at this time and actually influencing uh, influencing the, the development of the storm system here. Uh, we do anticipate that there will be increased activity in the region of um, uh, San Antonio, uh, in the region of Houston, in the region of Corpus Christi, going into this evening. Uh, for the weekend, we anticipate he heavy rainfall for Louisiana, Arkansas, as well as Mississippi. And as, uh, as some of the easterlies actually take root, we anticipate some of this um, additional moisture being pulled up into uh, the southern states such as uh, Louisiana, Mississippi, and Alabama, which will produce additional precipitation in the region of Tennessee, uh, the lower Tennessee Valley, uh, lower Mississippi Valley also. Um, also, we're looking at Ohio, the Ohio Valley. So this entire region, uh, the southeastern states, uh, should anticipate increased um, water, uh, uh, additional rainfall going into the weekend, going into the early part of next week. Of course, our main concern at this time is flash flooding, simply because of the advisories that have been issued by the Storm Prediction Center uh, going into this weekend. And um, being that we're looking at the 1st of May, uh, we are looking at possibly paying a little bit more attention to uh, the increased likelihood of tornadoes in the month of May. Um, we are actually a little bit below average for the entire year so far based on the figures coming from the Storm Prediction Center, but May is usually a very hot month for tornadoes in the region of Oklahoma, uh, Texas, as well as Arkansas. And of course, let's not forget possibilities of tornadoes in Alabama and Mississippi. Uh, if we go forward, uh, we can actually take a look at um, what's called the lapse rates and we don't see that incredible amount of instability as far as on the atmospheric level to really think that there's going to be um, uh, a lot of spawning of tornadoes in the next 24 hours. There is still the likelihood, but at this particular time, based on the in, uh, information coming in from our lapse rate forecast, uh, we're not seeing the numbers that we would would normally alarm us to think that it's going to be severe amount of instability in the atmosphere to increase the vorticity and increase the, the likelihood of 
uh, tornadoes actually getting, thunderstorms actually getting the e energy and also all of the different elements aligning to produce um, tornadoes or even funnels that will just simply touch down. Uh, if we take a closer look at also uh, the forecast going into the remainder of the week, uh, we can actually see that low that's actually here um, in uh, the lower southern Texas. Um, as you can see, it's going to actually just make its way up um, along, um, going up uh, with a cold front, um, going up uh, through the southeast states. That's why we anticipate additional thunderstorm activity in the region of, uh, of Tennessee and Ohio. And we can see this uh, cold front is actually starting to make its way further, further south. And with that ahead of it, there's going to be additional uh, turbulent weather. Um, eventually, this cold front will make its wrap its way all the way down to southern Florida. So they should anticipate additional uh, uh, heavy rainfall in the region of Orlando, central Florida, uh, Jacksonville, uh, West Palm Beach. Um, in the middle of, of next week, uh, the weather should start changing. Things will start to clear up quite a bit for the core. Um, um, in the states of Texas and Oklahoma as a high pressure system actually makes its way into northern Texas and Ho Oklahoma but uh, residents of the southeast states are going to see quite a bit of turbulent weather, severe weather with this low pressure system actually migrating its way into uh, the, uh, the, the, Florida, the state of Florida. Um, of course uh, we're going to continue to monitor this uh, system going into uh, the weekend. We anticipate, like we said, flash flood advisories for the states of Louisiana, Arkansas, as well as Mississippi and Texas. And we anticipate quite a bit of uh, severe thunderstorm activity uh, in the next few hours. It will continue to be that way um, uh, closer to the coast. Of course, this low is actually pulling in quite a bit of moisture. Warm, moist air is actually going to be fueling um, additional um, um, thunderstorm activity in the region of, of, of south, uh, southeast Texas, also uh, New Orleans, and also Louisiana, and also Arkansas. So that is what we're actually looking at right now. Uh, do keep in mind also that with one of the elements we also look at in our forecast has to do with the dew points. And the dew points are actually in the low 70s, so that is not another element to show that there's quite a bit of water saturation and that is going to increase the likelihood of um, additional storm activity um, in the region and let's not rule out possibility of hail we do see it on the radar and we are continuing to watch it for you as far as the rest of the country is concerned we see that uh, temperatures um, across the country are, are relatively moderate los angeles is 80 degrees uh, we have denver is going to be uh, Denver is at 81 degrees, Houston is coming in around 68 degrees, Atlanta is about 63 degrees, and of course Chicago is around 39 and 40, 40 degrees right now. So it's still quite of a chill factor in the region of the Great Lakes, Illinois, um, but we anticipate things kind of warming up um, this weekend for, this, uh, for the Northeast, and we will continue to watch um, the storm system just off the coast of Texas going into Louisiana and of course if we have any major changes we will of course bring it to you from Bio News Network. So we appreciate all of our subscribers and of course please remember to always bow to the weather and thank you so much. Have a great day.